I have a soft top on the side by side and I've noticed here lately when me and Bruno take our tractor rides in the afternoon, the top of it is starting to droop down just a little. I think I finally figured out why. It is a windy day here in Tennessee and we're supposed to get some rain tomorrow, which is good because it's been kind of dry here lately. I've got a lot of things to get done today, friends, but the first thing I need to do before it rains tomorrow is some maintenance on the right of way that comes into the farm. And in order to do that, I need to put the loader back on the T25. Take off the loader during the summertime because of the mowing season. And I keep it on in the winter and the fall. It just makes mowing a lot easier without the loader on there. It just takes a minute or two to put this loader back on. It's no big deal, but I always make sure I clean off these hydraulic quick connects right here before I do because there is some nastiness on there for mowing all summer. This tractor could also use a bath. Might try to do that this week. So when you hook up the loader, TYM did something really good here. You got four different hydraulic lines and they're labeled with a color right there as far as the cover goes. And there's a little chart right there on the frame that shows you where to put each one. Without that, I'll probably get it backwards. Before we get started, put some grease in the loader. I'm not sure when the last time this was done. What you know, I am out of grease. Never fails. guys this is the road it's actually a right of way through the farm beside me that comes into my place and over time the gravel or the rock i think it's three quarter inch gets pushed down from this high point down here now there is a better fix for this long term i may do that in the future but for right now about two or three times a year i come down here with a little t25 and i push the rock up to the very top then i'll take my land plane on the bit tractor and smooth it out if you're wondering why we're not going to be using the track loader to do this job today that land does not belong to me that i'll be driving on and the wheels on the t25 are a whole lot less aggressive on the soil than the tracks and i don't want to make a mess so uh that's the main reason why if i own this land right here 
I'd have the track loader down here because I wouldn't care as much, but I don't want to make a mess on my neighbor's place.
All right, guys, I'm sawing up something today that I'll do here at my sawmill maybe three or four times a year, sometimes more than that. I've not done it in a while, to be honest with you. I think I've showed myself doing this before, but I never explained what I was doing or even talked about it. So today, I thought I would explain it to you guys, and for you sawyers out there, you probably already know what I'm getting ready to do when I say the word dunnage. So according to Wikipedia, in construction, dunnage is often scrap wood or disposable manufactured material whose purpose is to be placed on the ground to raise construction materials to allow, to allow access for forklifts and slings or hoisting and to protect them for the elements, or from the elements, excuse me. It's also referred to as uh, blocks of wood. When you talk about maybe a manufactured home or a single wide, they use dunnage to put under the single wide between the cinder blocks and the frame to hold it up. So anything like that that's an off size, you know, it's dunnage. Like when I'm stacking lumber out here that somebody's gonna come by, I'll put dunnage underneath it, usually four by fours, so my pallet forks can get under it. And usually I make dunnage out of very low grade logs. What in the world is that over there? It's a jar fly, man, that thing's loud. Hopefully it's not coming through the microphone here. So uh, low grade logs or leftover pith out of a log, I make into dunnage most of the time. And right now I'm totally out of dunnage. I'll have to keep at least eight or 10 four by fours up here, some eight footers and four footers for that reason. I sold some lumber the other day, the guy had a trailer that needed dunnage to put it on there properly. So I just threw them in there and got rid of them. And most of the time that's what happens to them at sawmills. You'll use them for stacking wood on somebody's trailer and it's thing you know you're out of it. But it's usually waste material so you're not really losing money. And it's a good use for low grade logs. This is white pine, it's a terrible saw log. There's a ton of taper in it. You guys saw me use the tow board out here to raise up the operator's side. It's just not good for a lot of things besides dunnage. We're gonna be making full size four by fours out of this, which is 16 quarter on the scale. We will not be doing dimensional lumber, a full four inches, so we got a lot of material to work with. And usually I like to get rid of my knot clusters if I can, but on something like this, you got a knot cluster every 24 inches, it's all over it. And there's no way of getting around it. These four by fours are not gonna be very strong because of all the knots. And that's okay because it's dunnage. I'm not selling this to a customer to build with, but Another reason I'm showing this is if you have a sawmill or you think you're wanting to get into sawmilling and you're not familiar with this, it's a great way to get some use out of some low grade logs. And especially if you have a farm like we have here, you always have a use for a four by four for something. And you will run out of them because they go fast. So it's just something you have to saw up every few months. So just part of it. But this should produce at least six four by fours, maybe five, I don't know. Maybe that's been a little, a little too uh, much credit here. I think I'm giving too much credit to this log. I don't know if I'll get five or six or not. There's a lot of taper here. I'll at least get four. If we get five or six, that's great, but probably four. And when you do dunnage, if you have some four by fours with some wane, which means bark on the corner or the sides. That's okay, keep going. And dunnage can be any size that you want. Two by fours, three by threes. I've done six by sixes many a times, or eight by eights. I usually don't go bigger than a six by six though. I did eight by eights one time, but I can't remember why. But four by four is usually the standard that most people saw dunnage out of, so. There we go. Now you guys know about dunnage and you've been educated. So on the sawmill, Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. Call Joe if you want those blades. Cell phone numbers in the video description. Thanks to everybody on Patreon for supporting me here in the channel. If you want to get on Patreon, there's a link down below. It's $5 a month or $60 a year. And you can find out what's going on here in the channel or what's going on here in the channel before anybody else does. And between now and Christmas, friends, there is a ton of stuff happening here at my property. It's just amazing what I got planned here for the next few months that you guys are going to get to see here on this channel. There's a lot going on. It's going to be very busy and you guys are going to see every bit of it. But if you're on Patreon, you already know about some of it and you'll get to see it way before everybody else does. So there's your perk 
for being on there. And it supports me here on the channel. And I use those funds every month to buy oil, lubrication for the sawmill beds, and more importantly, diesel, because I go through a lot of diesel here at the mill. So, all right, there's my little sales pitch for Patreon. And fresh sweatshirts and zippy zip up. I can't talk, good Lord. Sweatshirts and zipper, zipper, a zipper hoodie. I need cue cards, this is embarrassing. So hoodies with zippers are on the website now over at Farm Focus. There's a link down below, my goodness, zippers and whatever. I'm gonna shut up now and get solid, I'll tell you what. You guys hang in there.
All right, friends, we did better than I thought we would do. Those first three boards I pulled back, they're four inches thick and they're three inches wide. There is some weighing on the corners right there. These two, not so much, but these were bonuses right here. I didn't even think we'd do this well on this log, guys. I'm really surprised here. And over here on the sawmill, we have our full dimension four by fours. Now granted, these two on the sides have a decent amount of weighing on them right through there, but like I said earlier, guys, it's dunnage and that really doesn't matter. And I was able to get six four by fours out of the log. So that's pretty good, guys. Six four by fours and three three by fours. I'm not sure how many board feet that is. I'll put it right here. I'll have to figure that up later. But out of a low grade pine log, not too bad, guys, not too bad. And actually, these right here have very limited knots on them. Got a few knot clusters right there, but not too bad. Better than I expected. A very good day here at the mill. All right, guys, it is seven o'clock and it's Sunday, which means I have to do a live over on YouTube in one hour. So I gotta get this place cleaned up untension the blade. I already, actually, I already did that. So the blade is untension. Uh, get the air compressor, clean this place up. Cut a few of these down to four feet on the length. I don't need all eight footers for dunnage. I like four footers more than anything here. So uh, probably more than half of these, I'll go ahead and get the chainsaw and do a rough cut down to four foot on those. Put the cameras up, then head down to the timber frame and get ready for the live. So, uh, Thanks for watching, friends. I really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.